How did you get involved in the civil rights movement? Uh, that's, that's one thing that uh, I always had a problem with. I never did get involved with the civil rights movement, with the civil rights movement. Okay. I've always okay. believed in trying to promote civil rights amongst people such as myself and anyone, as a matter of fact. Okay. But the uh, fact is, the day of that movement, I was supposed to have been in school. But a friend of mine, or an uh, acquaintance of mine, had told me that earlier that uh, Martin Luther King was in town that day and that he was going to uh, be there. And I said I wanted to be there too. I wanted to come and find out what it was all about. And because you, I didn't know anything about it. Right. Okay, and when you left school, you were at what, what high school at the time? Omen. Okay, and when you left school, where did you come downtown? Uh, to uh, the park area, the okay. Kelly Ingram Park area. And um, we walked around the corner, and during that time, the activity was, wasn't was easy to view. So we walked around and came in the front of the crowd rather than behind. I thought it would be in the middle of the crowd somehow. And uh, I saw policemen and all of the activity. So we started walking toward there. Well, I myself, I don't know what happened to acquaintance of mine started walking toward the uh, activity and as I approached and got closer they turned and looked at me and and uh, I got closer and I saw it coming toward me so I turned to leave to go around and get with uh, where the black people were so I could get some information because I knew I wasn't going to get anything from the police so as I turned and started to walk away I grabbed and the rest of it uh, Grabbed by the policeman and, and uh, yanked toward him. And uh, afterwards, I was uh, grabbed and hustled to a uh, white van and bodily picked up and thrown, well, not well thrown, as a matter of fact. And as I started still, I was just pushed on in. Okay, but before this happened, uh, when the police grabbed you in the collar, uh, is that when the dog bit you? Did the dog bite you? As near as I can remember, that that happened simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Did you? Because, uh, the 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 uh, the policeman grabbed me. I don't remember what hand, but the dog he, he grabbed me with one hand. And uh, well, I could uh, show the, the bite marks and all, mm -hmm. but uh, when I was so there, you still have the scars. Yes, okay. but. Uh, um, that, that happened simultaneously, and I was surprised because I was walking away. But during that time, the racial air was so thick that I, with whatever it was, that I couldn't uh, really focus to find out what was going on because of adult activity where I thought being. So uh, I, looked, I was looking, but as I looked, I couldn't look up. I was looking at the white, uh, you know, it was always a concentration on white. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the white three-wheel motorcycles coming toward me. And uh, it, it happened so fast, there was nothing I could do except throw up a leg and try to protect myself. And as I was doing that, there I went. Yeah. Okay. It, you did go to jail then? They took you to jail? Yeah. But not the, <laughs> not the not regular facility. They took me to the fairgrounds okay. and uh, a huge tent. And... Uh, these circumstances were uh, because of the mass arrest. Is that why you had to go out to Fair Park? Is that yes, what that's, what, that's what I was told. Okay. And do you remember how long you remained in jail or arrested? No, not that I cannot remember because a lot has happened since then, and uh, the things that have happened prevent me from remembering at the moment. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, rather sketchy memory, okay. so I, I like being rather. Uh, Precise with okay. whatever stage. Did any other person, uh, family member of yours participate in the movement at all or get arrested or go to the mass meetings? No. Okay. Not that I know about. Okay. Uh, after you returned to school after being arrested, were you suspended? Did, I you think so. Suspended? I think so. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Okay. I remember being in the auditorium and uh, the, the principal gave uh, good bombasting and the crowd began laughing, but I was just standing there rather embarrassed. 
uh, at, at the outcome. Okay. Uh, how did your family members react to your participation? Well, they were angry because I didn't attend school that day. Okay. okay. What church were you a member of at that time? Were you a member of the church? I wasn't a member of a church, but uh, the family activity, uh, I was uh, rather instructed to go to church. But often I did not go uh, because of the fact that I'm not a religious person. Okay. Well, the church where your parents or your family members were attending, were they involved in the civil rights movement during that time, do you know? They never told me of it. Okay. What church were they going to, do you know, at that time? Uh, uh, I see it. I know where it is, but I don't remember the name of it. It's, uh, um, I don't remember the name. Okay, that's all right. Okay, what, do you, what benefits do you, uh, your family, and the community realize as a result of that uh, movement? In your hands? Yes, what benefits were gained? Uh -huh. You don't think that any benefits were done during the 63 with the... Well, all, all of the overall uh, is where um, gradually um, facilities were opened, the white only signs and colored only signs were removed. But there was always the same racial air, it was all, except among some Caucasian people. Some Caucasian people during that time were openly friendly and uh, inviting as a matter of uh, gaining access to normal community things, while uh, most weren't. And uh, the only thing that I could uh, see that actually happened was the toilet became integrated and the water fountains became integrated and gradually various other things because of various influences among certain groups and because of the nationwide pressure that was put upon the Caucasians and the whites and various other races in opening all of those uh, opportunities. And the government is the main thing. All of that brought about governmental and political action yes. that brought all that about. Yes. Now that spurred it, yes. but it's the votes and the political actions and the laws passed that brought all that about. Okay. Okay, if you were, were in control of an organization or a movement of such, and could go back and change some things, what would you change? If I could go back to the movement of the past uh, and change some things. What the would you change? Movement, yes. I, what would I change? Well, I take a look at the form, the shape, the uh, this could get me into trouble, but I really believe this, and I really think this. It's not a feeling or anything. Well, this is your, this is your personal interview. Okay. The things that I would change would be a more careful choice of people involved in all of those movements. And uh, where the head beatings and all that was concerned, that was necessary uh, as a matter of uh, the laws not being changed anyway, because that would have remained status quo. But the, the things that I would change would be, well, I wouldn't change anything actually, because that would be entirely hypothetical. And being hypothetical isn't easy for me, uh, except when joking with or, or, or uh, just fantasizing or something, and I don't like fantasizing too much. So I, there's not there's no that I could really say about it without really thinking about it. Okay. But there are too many, uh, well, to be just blunt, crooked people. Okay. Many of the people that were involved and, and had notoriety became too crooked. Okay. Illegal. All right. What is your assessment of the Birmingham movement, or have you been 
gone too long to really be able to tell what assessment has occurred in Birmingham. Uh, how successful uh, do you think the Birmingham movement was? What were its accomplishments? Uh, what were its failures? Now, you may or may not be able to answer, answer, that, answer that question because if you've been gone a good while at Birmingham, you may not know. Well, where Birmingham is concerned, the political issues, the civil issues, the business issues, I have no knowledge of because I've been gone for years. And I don't uh, really, when I, earlier when I said that the people or some of the people that were involved became too crooked, and I was talking about the whole United States as a whole, not just Birmingham, Alabama. I mean, uh, there's no, uh, there aren't any particular cases of that that I can mention without causing major concern where my uh, own welfare is concerned in the ensue the best of the minute or here, okay. or slandering someone and all that kind of thing. I'm okay. not going to do that. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else that you would like to add that we have not dealt with at this interview? Anything else? Any comments? Any statements you want to make? Of uh, anything that you would like to leave with uh, young people uh, that well, may hear your testimony? There isn't much that I could really say because of the fact that uh, where anything is concerned, there's always the air that uh, black people have done so much for the black people of the country. And in being called black all the time, and in being called African all the time, which I'm not. That, that, that makes uh, Africans really don't like me much so <laughs> of the day. So um, there's uh, really not much I can uh, relate to you on that because of the fact that I'm not uh, a popular person where uh, personals are concerned. Maybe because of this, as you say, but uh, I've never had any notoriety. I've never even talked about it. Okay. Well, I've I never talked about it with anyone, as a matter of fact. Okay. What about, uh, you're, you now reside in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, do you uh, have an assessment uh, as you look at Atlanta compared it to Birmingham? Do you have anything that you may want to say about the two cities? Well, the two cities compare, but I cannot really make that comparison because of the fact that I was living there and not here and occasionally visiting here, but not becoming involved in anything. So uh, the political structure, uh, I can't say anything about, because I'm not familiar with uh, Birmingham's political structure or business structure or anything else about it. Okay. But um, where Atlanta is concerned, uh, it was basically integrated, so to speak, but there was that still racial attitude nonetheless and now but uh, since blacks have been pressuring so much and becoming involved in so much it's eased some but in 1980 I went to a barber shop that I found was white in the middle of downtown Atlanta and got refused and that was in 1980 1980 with a black mayor and everything else but you and I've, I've been uh not because of any rowdiness or anything like that, but just because of racial attitude. Uh, I had the police called on me while I was sitting in the bar drinking beer alone, not saying anything to anyone, and thinking about drinking a beer, maybe getting them other and leaving. And there comes a black policeman and said, the management wants me to leave because they reserve the right not to serve whom it is that they don't want to serve. Well, do you think that was really because of color of your skin? Is that, were you the only black in there? I was the only person in there of my color. Yes. Okay, so you still experience that in Atlanta, Georgia? Yes. Okay. Let me ask you about your visit with us here today. Uh, how do you feel after having seen the statue that is out there for foot soldiers and it shows the images of you and that picture that was taken in 1963 in May. That statue doesn't look like me. 
It looks like a totally different boy. That looks like an African boy. That's what you feel about. It looks like African boy? It looks like an African boy. Uh, the color or the features? The features. The lips, the size. You take a look at the picture there and the statue there. The boy is short. I was tall for my age. I was looking down at the dog, but that was his interpretation of the artist, I suppose. But the boy doesn't look like me. And, uh, I mean, it's representative of. Yes, That's the way I think right, about it. Right. So and representative of. I'm wondering still why me? Because I've never had any notoriety whatsoever concerning that picture. Yes. That picture was in the paper, but many other people were too. Yes. Many other situations. Buses, bombing. Yes. But they chose to use the little boy at 15 for that statue. The little boy in age, but not the little boy in size. But that's what they chose. <laughs> that's what they chose. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Well, it's. Uh, I really don't know how to say it. Uh, Are you surprised when you found out about it? I was totally flabbergasted. I didn't know what to think. Uh, when I when I first contacted you, I was in Kentucky and uh, I couldn't sleep, so. Uh, I didn't know what to say. I, I, I still, I'm, I'm at a loss for words concerning the reasoning that, that uh, because of that, or uh, whatever, I don't know. The mayor, the mayor of the city chose that to use as a monument for foot soldiers. He chose that uh, picture to, mm -hmm. to, to be used. Yes. We're very proud of it, and I hope you will be too. Uh, and now that we know who you are, we can add a name under there. Which you were the young boy that the sculpture used. Mm. Well, mm. I'm still wondering why, after all the information that I had given and 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 all that, uh, all that does is establish me as being a young African boy, which I'm not. You prefer being called a Negro? I prefer being called what I am, a colored. Oh, oh, you prefer being the word colored? I am. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, the, the, the main thing that, the main complaint that I had with the Negro and the Black race is that anytime anyone says colored, there's that old racial air of you, you ain't white enough you ain't white enough, you ain't comfortable. So that's your wishes? Color is mixed race. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, is there anything else you feel like you want to talk about in a personal manner or anything else that you'd like to say before we end this interview? Uh, no. You I mean, there's, 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 uh, there are many things that, that uh, I could talk about that uh, make me uh, uh, that, that, that I think about all of this, but that would take too much time. It would take uh, a day or two to really converse. Okay. So, and I don't have time to converse, and I don't think you do either. No, because you have a, a right. plane to get right. at 825. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, well, it's it's been a pleasure uh, having you here, and uh, I'm very grateful to the fact that we could find you, uh, and uh, hope that uh, you will come back to the Civil Rights Institute and come back to the park. And since you're in the photography business now, you need to come back and get some shots of that after we put your name on it. I think I will. But uh, the photography business that I am in is rather rough and difficult as a matter of subject material and uh, selling 
if I were working with some company, it would be different, but uh, I'm freelance, so wherever I can sell, whatever I can sell is what I have to do. That's why I drive a truck. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I mean, that's the only way to make sure money. That's the only way to earn a living at. Right. But uh, although I've, I've studied, I've, I've become very good at it, there's, oh, there's that racial attitude too, that uh, uh, if you're not white, you've got best of a chance. Yeah, that's me. I've got a best of a chance of anything. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure, and uh, I hope you come back to see us uh, again. Thank you for being here.